What's going on YouTube? Um, Nathaniel here with Birmingham Auto Pros. I wanted to upload a video to talk about uh, the process in which I use spot free water to do mobile detailing. So today I am working on this Range Rover. It is black. Um, it's in direct heat. So for a lot of us detailers, this can be a very big challenge, meaning wherever you spray your water, you have to be very careful um, that you don't leave water spots. Uh, a client calls you out and you know to do their vehicle and if you don't uh, control where your water is sprayed um, relative to the temperature too what can happen is the calcium and iron deposits in the water can actually build up on the surface and with that sun uh, in sense it bakes them into the paint so by having spot free water which is major what I want to highlight on this video so by having spot free Diana's water um, every single morning uh, before we go out mobile, uh, I got a 100-gallon water tank uh, on the back of the truck, and that tank is filled up with spot-free water. Um, there I was just showing you guys a little uh, sprayer that I have made, uh, because when I go around the vehicles, um, that little sprayer um, has pressurized air in it, and it stays pressurized throughout the whole process for wheel cleaning, bug cleaning, um, and all that's in there is it's a two-gallon sprayer. Down the dirt and stuff on them wheels so that's a neat little cool contraption I should probably do a video on that just to help a lot of guys out because those little trigger sprayer uh, bottles that you know typical uh, places use they your hands can get very tired from just constantly pushing it all the time um, and as you can see I'm spraying on these mats here um, boom boom it's it's real quick I mean it stays pressurized throughout the whole entire process um, and so back to the what I was saying in the initial part of the video, um, as you can see, just by having that spot free water, I'm able to walk around the vehicle and prep the vehicle um, and not worry about where my water runoff is going um, if, if I'm going to be able to get to it in time. I like to say this, um, the sun is our friend as far as when it comes to a maintenance detail. Uh, because while I'm doing the outside, after I've got done doing the outside, um, I'll just go ahead and open the doors and tackle the inside and let the sun dry the exterior of the vehicle. Um, so that's, that's a major uh, uh, beneficial part to my business and how I'm able to get so many stops done a day. Um, because if I had to truly go around and blow dry and, and uh, towel dry all these vehicles, it would just be... Uh, very time-consuming and a big headache. Um, so another thing I want to touch on in this video that um, is very beneficial, I don't use a high gallon per minute unit. Um, as you can see on the back of my truck over there in the corner, we're just using a regular um, electric pressure washer. Um, we got a little turbo nozzle attached to the end of the, uh, I believe that's an MTM uh, gun on the end of that hose. And that little turbo nozzle does a great job at just basically removing kind of little baked on dirts and stuff. However, I will stress this, um, definitely do not get way too close to the paint because you can remove paint with that turbo nozzle even though this unit is not a high gallon per minute, but it is pretty powerful. I typically, um, when I'm using it on the wheels, what I like to do, uh, as you can see me doing right here, is you really can't get too close for the wheels. They're just a lot more, uh, I guess, better protected than the paint. I don't know if that's the right word. But um, when it comes to the painted surfaces around the vehicle, I usually will switch to a yellow tip. Um, however, when I'm prepping, what I'll do is I'll just switch to, uh, or I'll just take that turbo nozzle and um, hold it far enough away from the vehicle to where it's not doing any damage and I know I'm not gonna rip anything off. Um, I did a, a, a vehicle uh, wheel rotation right there, and I do that when I spray chemicals on the wheels just so that I can get a full cleaning of the wheel. Uh, I've had instances where customers pulled their stuff into the garage and they're like, hey, uh, you know, my wheels don't look that clean. And that can tend to happen if you don't actually rotate the wheels, especially on um, foreign vehicles like uh, Land Rover, Mercedes, BMW, uh, Bentleys and stuff like that. They have, um, they have, the brakes are great. However, when you pull it into the garage, 
it is just um, you have a different uh, side of the wheel that you're looking at when it rotates, and, and they have like um, really strong, powerful brakes, so they just throw off a lot of brake dust is all. Um, so I am just going around one more time, and what I do is I'll just throw um, some wheel cleaner on there and just kind of blast away the dirt, and that really kind of locks in uh, that look. It's very straight to the point. So here I am prepping the bugs on the front of the vehicle and I have recently started using this very soft um, kind of, it's not microfiber but it's, it's, it's not like a brush material like you're thinking. It's very, I guess advanced for detailing um, as far as getting those little bugs off. What I'll do is I'll spray some all purpose cleaner on there. If they're caked on, if they're not caked on, in this particular instance they were, um, but if they're typically not caked on, a, a pressure rinse will do it, um, and sometimes you can even spray all-purpose cleaner on there, and it'll just break down the bug, and then you can just pressure wash it, but um, there are certain circumstances where I need to whip the screen brush out if the bugs are kind of, like if they just went on a road trip, or something along the lines of that, then I do like to use this green brush for that reason but I will typically pre-rinse um, the areas first and then I'll go on so that just knock off any loose dirt um, or, or you know abrasive dirt I should say and then when I actually go in with a little contact scrubbing um, I'm not putting very much pressure on this brush at all um, it's more just kind of gliding over the surface and letting the cleaner do its job I found that that works phenomenal. Um, the cleaner is already a really good cleaner. So it just kind of breaks them bugs down. And you can see on the bristles too how I'm not pushing very hard. It's just very soft, gliding right over the surface. Really just kind of to, like I said, just knock that edge off. And then I'll just come back with the rinse. And uh, that'll do it. But note too, um, this would be difficult to do without spot-free water just because indirect sunlight like this, you would have water spot galore. Um, water spots on the, on the sunroof and on the windshield, um, especially if you don't get to it right away. That's why I'm able to basically take my sweet time uh, prepping these vehicles because I don't have to, you know, dry or move really, really quick and rush through these details. I can take my time and, and everywhere that I've touched and I've been, I know, hey, it's clean. That crevice, that crack is clean right there. Um, I rinsed it down. So, I mean, realistically, at the end, when you get ready to hit it with the spray wax, um, it's not very challenging at all. You're not really wiping any dirt off. It's just that final, uh, I guess I could say, detailed touch. And uh, so if you really take your time, that's what spot-free water does. It allows you to take your time and not have to fight uh, what it is you do. So I'm just rinsing this off the front here. Um, and then you can see that yellow tip. Once I start getting to uh, the wash process, which we're gonna foam cannon after this, once I get uh, into the wash process, I typically do like to use that yellow tip. Um, and again, I'm not holding it real close to the paint. I'm just, just enough to be able to get loose what I need to get loose, but not too close where it's gonna do any damage. Just working around the car here. So here I am attaching um, our foam cannon. I believe that's a MTM, I think. Um, I'm not really a big brand guy. I just know it works and I use it. I'm gonna foam down the top. When you're working by yourself, um, I have found some dudes foam the whole car. However, when you foam the whole entire car, um, you can only realistically do, you know, certain sections at a time. So when you're getting around the vehicle and if you foam, like let's say I were to foam this other side that I'm not working on. Well, by the time I get done washing the other side and I come over to the, you know, the other side, it's, it's going to be dried up. 
Um, so that's kind of why I displace foam like that, just to be in a more controlled state. Uh, so that way when I'm actually, you know, cleaning and uh, removing the dirt from the surface of the paint, um, I'm not going around and kind of working over myself. I'm doing exactly what I need to do um, in the area where I need to do it. So when I typically spray foam on a vehicle, uh, it's just better to spray kind of where you're working. Like I'm not going to spray on the other side just to for it to dry up to spray again. It's kind of a waste of water, uh, not to mention a waste of product if it's just going to dry up. And uh, when, when you work like this, your soap tends to uh, be more lubricated, you know, when you're actually going over it after you've applied it rather than waiting a few minutes uh, and walking around the vehicle. Um, so what I'll do, uh, again, keep in mind that we're in direct sunlight, uh, it does, with, with spot-free water, um, it won't leave any marks behind, even though, like, if that soap does dry. But the reason I come so quickly uh, with the water is because what I've lifted from the surface, I want to go ahead and get that rinsed so it doesn't just dry back up on the surface. And by getting that rinsed thoroughly, what I'm able to do is basically after I'm done with this detail and just rinsing all this down, if the client didn't get a spray wax or they didn't get any type of protection, what I'll do is I'll just let it air dry. And as soon as it's done, I don't have to go up there with a blower, especially if it's a warm day. Sometimes if it's a cold day, um, I might have to get a little handheld blower out and just kind of blow off the water. But if it's a warm day, you don't really have to go back up there. So again, like I said, section by section, you can't clean the whole car all at once. Um, it's very, uh, this is kind of what brings uh, the details together. Um, somebody that tries to, you know, I've had guys that have worked with me in the past and they try to clean the whole car at one time and they end up missing areas. So just take your time, you know, go over the areas, you know, say, hey, I've been there. Um, and that's what I like to do is I like to get the hood, the, the front done. And I'm, and I'm using gravity. So I'm not going to start at the bottom uh, of the vehicle and work my way up. I'm going to work from the, you know, the top down. So all that water on the top of the roof um, after we get done, we're just using gravity. We're just going to take that water, just rinse it down, and it's all going to flow down. Um, real easy. And then once you get to the sides, you don't have to worry about, you know, putting soap up on the roof because the roof's already done. So I'm just kind of combing through this grill here to make sure there's no more soap left in all these cracks and crevices. I will foam in this particular instance I can move relatively quickly on the sides because you don't need a ladder so you're not constantly walking around um, and then I'll just you know some foam did get up there so what I'll do is I'll just kind of make sure that I rinse it off I guess that would be one of the downsides to a foam cannon is sometimes when you're using them you know they, they tend to throw a lot of product on an area that's already been done So, and what I'll typically do is there's two sides. That mitt that you see me using there is, I guess, a form of what's called a wash. It's a microfiber wash pad. So, it's not an actual, like, noodle mitt. It's not a chenille wash mitt. It's a microfiber. I like those because you're able to squeeze that one into smaller, like, nooks and crannies, like, around the mirror. And they're just, in, in my experience, they're just more precise. With them being more precise, it allows me to just kind of get in small uh, little areas that, like those little noodle mitts or those little chenille wash mitts, they're, it, you can get into them, but um, sometimes I've said, like at the end of the wash process, I've noticed in the past that by using those, um, I tend to not get, uh, not good results, but they're just like, they tend to miss some areas. As you can see, like around the door handles and stuff, they just fit so perfect in there. Um, allowing me to just kind of, you know, do what I do, be able to remove that dirt safe and efficiently uh, without scratching anything. And there's, you know, each section that I do, what I'll do is I'll take my mitt and I'll wash one side and then I'll use the other. So I'll wash one side with one of the mitts. Uh, it's two-sided mitt, so just flip it. And then I'll go back to the bucket, which has a grit guard in there, um, catches all the dirt on the bottom. And then here, me and the client are just kind of conversing a little bit. I guess um, he had to go somewhere, so we were just trying to figure out some plans. 
and then once you hit it with that that spot free water um you just rinse it down it's, it's it's pretty good to go from there this wash process is pretty straightforward um just wanted to let people know that it can be done outdoors um, especially you know indirect sun being a black vehicle it really can be done and uh, that's that's mainly it guys um, I did get I did do the other side I just didn't get that on video um, and with that little retractable reel that makes it so much easier to um, basically wrap up at the end of the at the job and just like that you know things are put away very efficiently um, and you know if anybody's ever in the driveway or needs to move around uh, most of the stuff stays on my work vehicle um, I usually don't unload anything if I don't have to and then here as you guys can see the water is all dried up so what I did was I did the interior um, let the water dry up and then at the end of the detail I'll come back when the tires and everything are dry and I'll just apply this tire shine and I found applying tire shine with a brush probably gets about 80% of the wheels done. It's pretty straightforward. Um, again, I want to highlight the fact that uh, your process is everything too. But um, having the right tools, having the right products, um, having the right setup doesn't have to be nothing fancy. Uh, just you know, a system that works. And by me highlighting this. Uh, kind of deionized uh, spot free water um, as you guys can see the vehicle you know looks spotless at this point um, we could either a hit it with a wax um, a spray wax or something if the client opted in for that uh, this is a maintenance wash so a uh, maintenance wash uh, vehicles already been protected so we're not going to add anything to it uh, probably for another couple months or so and that pretty much wraps up this video, guys. Um, so let me know what you guys think uh, in the video below. Um, in the, I mean, I'm sorry, in the comments below.